Welcome to Boozy Sessions. I am your host, George Schultz. This is a podcast where we talk anything and everything whiskey as we enjoy whiskey. In each episode, I will be interviewing a special guest who will be drinking with me. We're going to be talking about the whiskey that we're drinking today as we get to know our guest, and then we're going to end with a game of truth or drink where I ask questions that no one else was ever drunk enough to ask. Today's guest is a sought-after director of live events, concerts, plays, music videos, you name it. A self-proclaimed frustrated singer and an all-around adorable dad, Paolo Valenciano. Hi, hello. Hey, Paolo. Good George. to have you on the show. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, no problem. This is this is nice. This is fun. <laughs> nice yeah, to see it's you. cool. I'm just excited to get you a little drunk, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but other than that, it's going to be great to just catch up. How have you been? How have you been recently? I mean, this this whole thing is kind of crazy. But how is everything with you? We've recently just started to adapt to this whole online um, movement, no, when it comes to live shows and events. Uh, but it's still something. Completely alien to me. I, th- I mean, like no matter how many times we've done it in the past couple of weeks, pa- months, no, it's still, you know, uh, we're learning so much. It's such a new platform for for everyone. Although you know we've been doing online components for our shows for years, um, it's different that you know we you have to embrace it completely. <laughs> it's truly it. a digital <laughs> age, right? I, I mean, know, that we've man. moved into, and it's either you get. You get you flow with it or you get left behind by it. So it is tough. And, and, and you know, we were, we were I, I wouldn't say at the top of our game when this whole thing happened. But we, when it came to live events, you know, me and the and my group, I, we more or less know how to, to make things happen, right? Yeah. Um, this new age of events and concerts, it's really, it's a humbling experience for everyone. Uh, it doesn't matter how, how many years you've been in the industry. It doesn't matter how many great shows you've done in the past. Right now, all that matters is if you can survive, yeah, <laughs> if you can absolutely. adapt or not. So it's very humbling. And I truly believe that, you know, I mean, it's a skill that, that because it forced you to develop this skill, eventually when everything is done and over and life kind of normalizes a bit, it's going to be something that you're happy that you were forced to be put in the position, position to learn moving forward. Right? Yes, yes, definitely. I do feel like I wouldn't say a better version of myself because there are so many other challenges, other things that I'm struggling with now. I mean, like that I never struggled with uh, before the pandemic. But, uh, you know, there was one, I, I, I think the the... I wouldn't say the lowest point, but the most challenging uh, point in this during this entire lockdown was when I I had to shoot. Uh, this happened actually. This happened recently. I had to shoot an artist. The artist was promised to the client by the agency, but the artist's management was like, okay, you can you can she can be part of your show, but only one person is allowed in her house from your production. One person. One. Per- how is that even yeah. possible? I don't, well, she's related to me, so Jeffrey, I was like, uh, I, I think that person might be me. You know, that's not enough to get past <laughs> management sometimes, man. Well, it happened. <laughs> a close relation. It's yeah, not enough. So it happened. So I learned how to operate a lapel. I learned how to light. Uh, well, of course, I know how to hold the camera, but I had to light it. I had to hold the camera. I had to cue the music. And at one point, they were asking me to hold the script. I was like, yeah, I, I might need some help with that part now. Because well, I had to push four buttons in order for the, the show to start. But I would never, I would have never been in that a situation like that or allowed myself to be in a situation like that. If it weren't for this. right? If it weren't for this. But because of that, you know, it was so, it was so absurd that. I was just laughing at myself and I was like, wow, this is really like... This well, is- you still pulled it off and props <laughs> yeah. to you for stepping up to the plate because I, I, I would have just been too stressed to even do it. But I am going to cut and just say this is a whiskey podcast, so <laughs> we are going to like oh, yeah, shift, I, shift a, a little bit. There's, if, a threading, how, there's a threading to that, man. I mean, like... If, if I were allowed to just talk about, you know, <laughs> we just get lost talking about Star Wars and how great... Um, the, 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 how promising the Mandalorian has been. Yeah. Oh um, my God. But we will we will focus on whiskey for today. And part of why I was excited about this was to get into whiskeys and teach you how to properly drink and taste. And it's always fun to do. 
Um, but before we go into that, I wanted to ask you about your relationship with whiskey and, and maybe let, we can start at your relationship with alcohol in general. Um, are you a whiskey fan? And what was your first drink? Um, how big a part of like your adult life you th- would you say alcohol has kind of played in terms of your social activity and hanging out with your friends? It was really a major thing in Pangilinan's side, no? because the yeah. um, used to you, he used to drink a lot. But it it's become such a social thing for my family uh, on that side. Nah, I'm not very familiar with all you know all the kinds of wines, um, whiskey, gins, uh, and all these. Yung alak na ganyan, no? For me, mm. kasi what I, ako, basta masarap, I'll, I'll drink it. <laughs> yeah, know. absolutely. Uh, so for example, pag wine, um, I'm not picky at all, man. But but I, I'll taste it. I'll be like, okay, this is pretty good. With whiskey, I do have some favorites. Uh, Maker's Mark in particular is something that's very uh, close to my heart. But you know, Black Label, um, whatever brand you give me, as long as it's not cheap whiskey, then... As long as it tastes good, yeah. As long as it tastes good, then I'm I'm good. That's my relationship with with alcohol. Even beer. I mean, like some of these guys are so passionate about beer, and then they find out that I'm a beer drinker. They'll be like, "Oh, w- w- what do you like? Do you like dark IPA? Do you are you into you like light or um? Oh, basta, they start bringing up these terms. I'm just like, I don't know, man. As long as it tastes good, <laughs> I'll, I'll drink. <laughs> yeah, you know that's um, surprising, especially the whiskey. It's very very common here in the Philippines especially because the Philippines is a very underdeveloped whiskey market. So it's it's growing and there's like a love that's starting for it. And you had places like the Mandalay that, that were kind of getting some traction where like a whiskey bar where people would sit down and drink and try different whiskeys, right? So yeah, when you're drinking whiskey um, in general, we're kind of looking to upgrade our palate and we're looking to move on from maybe a blended whiskey into a blended malt and then into a single malt. And that's actually what we have for you today, a beautiful single malt from the Speyside region of Scotland, where it's very, very easy to get into the flavor profile of this, especially because it's it's easy for beginners. For And by beginner, I don't mean you're a beginner with alcoholic, but I mean somebody who's learning to appreciate the flavor profile and kind of going at what they're looking for in terms of the expression for the first time. So it's great to guide you through a whiskey like this that follows that flavor flavor profile of the Speyside region because this is kind of known as the signature Speyside whiskey in terms of its flavor profile. Very sweet, very fruity. So we're going to start with the, and I'm going to show this right here the box. We're going to start with the Hamnavolen double cask. You have that with you, Pao? Yes, I do. Perfect. So we're going to pour, we're going to start neat. So we're going to pour just a little bit. I'm going to pour it right by the microphone because I just love the ASMR of that whiskey pour. <laughs> but just there. This is a this is a beautiful whiskey. You don't have to drink too much. But I will say this. Once we start drinking, I'm going to encourage you to just, you know, enjoy it throughout the night. Whichever of these two whiskeys you sort of prefer. Feel free to just drink it throughout throughout the rest of the podcast. This is just something where we kind of want to drink and have fun. Game. I am so game. <laughs> okay, there. Let, let me know when you're ready, and then we can kind of get started with, with the tasting of it. I'm ready. Okay, where we're going to start is we're going to go on the nose, because um, whenever we have a whiskey, we kind of want to be able to have a little bit of that nose of the whiskey, because everything starts there. Everything that everything happens in the nose, and it prepares your palate for exactly what you're about to taste, and it kind of gets you excited, and it gets you kind of warmed up to try it. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to swirl the whiskey. I mean, a lot of people do that, but the purpose of swirling a whiskey is more to see the color and to see the... They call it the legs, where if you look where you pour it, you have these kind of thick leftovers that kind of look like legs falling down droplets, and that's to see the body of the whiskey. But because naturally whiskey, the alcohol by volume or the ABV is quite high already, you don't really need to swirl it to wake it up or get anything out of it, right? You can kind of just already smell off the bat. And when you smell, you don't want to go in too heavy. We'll go very lightly, very lightly on your nose, left to right. The first instinct is going to be to kind of just stick it in there and and smell, but that's going to be quite harsh because of the ethanol that's centered on that pour. So we'll go left to right, very lightly with our nose, almost getting to know it. A little trick that I love to, to 
teach people because when I learned it, it kind of blew my mind is it sounds strange, but you can breathe with your mouth at the same time. So take it in the nose, but also breathe in with the mouth together. And what that does is the mouth gets the harshness of the alcohol and the nose gets the flavor profile. So that's, that's the beauty in that kind of technique. So we're left behind with something that isn't as strong that pierces and more something that's like a flavor profile. And off the bat here on the nose, you're getting very, very sweet notes. Here you're getting already immediately honey, honey, very signature to Speyside, honey, apple, and toffee. These are the notes on the nose that we have for the double cast. And if you smell anything that's like kind of unique to you, that's the beauty of whiskey because each whiskey that you drink kind of has its own unique story. And your past experiences in your life and everything that you've connected to, you'll find different things and people will find different things when they're smelling. But in general, the notes of this particular whiskey really stay true to that Speyside flavor profile. How do you like it on the nose, man? The the open mouth thing is, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I felt the same way because, you know, normally when you take it in, it's kind of strong. But with this, yeah. it really, that the, like breathing it in through the mouth really that's absorbs nice. that harshness. Yeah, so it's very nice. nice. So now that we've kind of gotten to know the whiskey, we've had our first date, we've gotten to say hello, like little nose, we can now taste it. So what we don't want to do on the taste is we don't want to just gulp it down or just take a sip. What we want to do is we want to take around maybe, maybe for your case, a little bit less, but try to look for around half a mouthful. And then we're going to gargle it everywhere, as in over the tongue, under the tongue, palate. Let that really hit everywhere, almost like you're gargling at night but really just gargle the whiskey. So we'll do that together for around five to seven seconds. So three, two, one, whenever you're ready. Cheers, Cheers. brother. Mm. Mm. And then we swallow. Okay, so you'll notice a few things. A little bit spicy at first. (laughs) Around the palate, it's a little bit spicy. But the swallow itself of the alcohol was actually smoother the liquid itself goes down smoother and now you're feeling less of the whiskey in your throat and it's more around your palate which is kind of cool because the the alcohol is now spread throughout the mouth right so now we're getting these like flavor profiles we're getting to kind of appreciate what's happening through the expression on our mouth and i'm sure you already get to taste it everywhere right and this is where the kind of the fruitier flavor profiles come in. And with Tamnavul, and this is, it's actually very creamy, the, the textures on this. So it's creamy peaches. We have pear, we have pineapple, and then it follows through with just very, very rich flavor profiles on the note. And then it just kind of mellows out. And that's, that's what a space side whiskey kind of hits you like, just very fruity. How do you like the flavor profile on that, man? That was that was intense. <laughs> it, it, a little bit intense, right? I mean, on that first go. I've never done that, huh? I've never done that. Ever. Yeah, especially yeah. neat. The question that's thrown around a lot is, um, what's the right way to drink your whiskey? And the, the real answer is there really isn't a right way to do it. Um, but if you were to appreciate a single malt, the way I would suggest it is you try it neat first like this, and then you drop like maybe a small droplet, maybe like a a teaspoon of water just to like open it up. Then you try it again. And then if you want to drink it with ice then, because most most people in the Philippines love their whiskey with ice. And a lot of people in Scotland will say like, oh, no, ice is not, you don't put ice on your whiskey. You know, I mean, they, (laughs) they have the whole thing. But their natural temperature is so much lower there. So the room temp for the Philippines, you know, on a night out, you want your drink with ice. So that's cool, too. But the best way I'd say to do it is to try it neat and then try it with a bit of water. And then if you want to still try it with ice, then you try it with ice. But for Tam Navolin, I feel like me personally, I, I love this neat. I, it's 40% ABV, so it's not too strong. And the flavors are so sweet that it's kind of really easy to appreciate. How, how did you like it? Dude, that, that's got quite a kick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Definitely. I mean, like, like, yeah, even you were saying that uh, um, it wasn't that harsh going down my throat, but the moment it got into my stomach, man, I can feel it in my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> the spice, the spice, and then the stomach immediately kicks in. Well, you know, I mean, now we can kind of we can try and add some food and see what that does. Because one of the things I love a lot about whiskey is that not a lot of people realize that it's actually great for food pairings. A lot of when you think of food pairing and alcohol, you mostly think of wine. 
wine, like yeah. a red wine or white wine. How do, what do you pair it with? But patinga we, beer, eh. patinga beer, right? Yeah, <laughs> even even beer has its like you know, I mean, yeah. you are you know, you have like salty, salty things. But with whiskey, because if you look at whiskey, I mean, it's sort of like a, a more highly distilled beer in a way, because like it takes that barley and then it kind of distills it to an even farther degree. But yeah, we're ready to try that whiskey, the double cask of Tamival, and with a food pairing and then see how that works together. And this is one of my favorites to introduce because I like to think of this like we're, we all drink from home right now. So a lot of times at home, what we do is we're watching movies, we're on Netflix. So um, this is a really great pairing because it's kind of like people don't realize how well whiskey actually goes with popcorn. And that's where I sort of want to introduce this, this match of a flavor profile using cheese popcorn that the texture and the saltiness from the cheese to really like go well with the sweetness and that balance of the sweetness of the whiskey so what we can do now is you've, you've taken your sip of the whiskey now we can have a bite of the popcorn if you have your popcorners with you yeah that we have there should should look like that i never thought of it that way yeah uh, whiskey and food I, I actually yeah this is interesting it's more something you think of for a night out when you're just hanging out with your friends right yeah so now we can, yeah, take a bite of the popcorn and, and, you know, I mean, make sure, just appreciate the flavor, get that in there. Nice. Now we have the, the sweetness, I mean, that, that saltiness of the cheese and the popcorn left over. And then we can take a second sip after you do that of the whiskey. Once you're done swallowing, you can do kind of a very similar thing. Maybe even less if it was a little bit intense for you. Take even less of a mouthful with your with your mouth and kind of let the saliva carry it around. Take even less than a mouthful and just five to seven seconds. And then you swallow. So now you're sort of seeing how that the the saltiness of the food kind of meshes and creates this like kind of beautiful texture of flavor. And when you drink the whiskey and paired with that, it sort of becomes this like amazing way to just appreciate your whiskey casually. Dude, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's nice. Well, okay, you know what? I mean, if you like that, then I'm hoping the next for the next episode of The Mandalorian that comes out, bring some popcorn out, yeah, yeah, have like yeah. a little bit of whiskey, man, and just, <laughs> and just enjoy. This is the best way for me to enjoy um, watching the TV shows that are out now. Shut up. I said, I've, I've, I've actually never tried this, so um, this, this, this brand, so this is interesting. You know, and just to talk really briefly about, about Tamna Bolin in general, it, it is just such a, such a beautiful brand. Um, and when you look look at the story where where it is in the Speyside region, it's just Tamnavul and it's Gaelic for Mill on the Hill, and um, it's just this beautiful. And it's exactly what it sounds like. The distillery is this. It's next to this beautiful mill that's on the hillside in Scotland, and everything about it. It's just. It's a newer distillery, so it's just so amazing the process behind it. And with whiskey, when you hear the story of the distillery, it makes you just so much more excited to taste it. Um, the next thing we're actually going to be drinking is something that it's it's a newer a newer expression from Tam Nicole, and it's the sherry cask edition of of their of their whiskey. So what that means is when you're talking about sherry and whiskey and why they're so perfectly married together, a lot of whiskeys today will start off in an American oak ex bourbon and then finish in a sherry cask, whether it's Oloroso or or any any different kind of sherry. And a sherry is basically a fortified wine. So it's a cask that used to house a fortified wine that then kind of finishes the whiskey. And that's why people love the flavor profile because it has so many of these sweet notes that really bring a different level of texture. For Tam Navolin, it was actually finished in three different sherry casks. So that's why it's the sherry cask edition. So it was finessed in, in, and married in three different sherry casks and came back to harmonize together in that white oak. So it's going to be this really, really complex, beautiful flavor profile. And uh, when you're ready, you can actually try this and you can see the slight difference in this flavor profile compared to the double cask. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers, brother. So we'll, we'll take another nose first. 
Do I do the same thing, the the gargling, or? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, f to start, we're gonna take it on. We'll we'll start it out on the nose. nose okay, to got get it. The, to get the nose of it. So again, left to right, just just go lightly, and breathe in with your mouth together, and see how that's different from the first from the first whiskey that you tried. So on the nose here, we have really interesting notes. One of the official notes of it actually is baked tartatine, and it also has Seville oranges, and it's just a very, very, again, signature, signature to space side whiskey, very, very fruity flavor profile, which I think like just goes like absolutely beautiful and gets you so ready to try it. Doesn't go to Madeleine, no, 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 no stuff, right? As a whiskey drinker, what would make you choose one or the other is it just like a preference on the flavor or is there is one lighter or is one um how does that how does that work well yeah man absolutely um everybody has their own preferences for whiskey and if you're talking about scotch whiskey um scotch scotch whiskey is basically whiskey that's aged and matured in scotland so when you when you're looking at different scotch whiskies you have five major scotch re um, region whiskey regions in Scotland. Um, I think it's five or six. I know it's um, Highlands, Lowlands, Speyside, Isla, Islands, Campbelltown. Okay, yeah, we have our, around six, six, six whiskey regions in Scotland, and each whiskey region is known for its specific flavor profile. So if you have a Highland whiskey, you, the flavors are going to be a little more robust. If you have Island whiskeys, it's going to be a little smokier normally, and that's called peat. PD, PD or whiskeys. My dad, for example, doesn't like PD whiskeys, but I quite enjoy some smokier PD whiskeys. And Speyside is a lighter whiskey, so everybody sort of has their own preference, and that's kind of where they start in terms of looking. So they'll look at, oh, this is a Speyside whiskey. I normally wa like Speyside whiskeys or sweeter whiskeys. So that really does inform where they kind of like it. When you're talking about single malts too, what most people do is they'll start off with a 12 year old of the 12 year old version of the expression. And if they like that, that informs them that, hey, maybe I'll try the more expensive ones that are of the same. Ah, um, okay, okay. Tamnaville, you'll notice, doesn't have an age and that's because it's a no age statement whiskey. So it allows for them to be very flexible with the flavor profile of the whiskey. The reason why I love no age statements is because when you have an age, like a 12 year old or 15, that basically just means what is the youngest whiskey that's in that, in that blend or the, the age of the youngest whiskey that they use to create that expression. Like um, in terms of when they're aging multiple whiskeys, the youngest whiskey in that is a 12 or a 15. So that's what that means. A no age statement, means they get to marry older and younger whiskeys to really focus on the flavor profile and create the expression that they want that has the flavor yeah. profile they want. So I hope that to a degree answers your question about like what where people kind of look look to start with. Uh, a lot of Filipino drinkers, the, the preference is sweeter whiskeys. Um, you know how, how sweetness is such a big part of yeah. our, you know, I mean, culture and, and culinary culture even. So like sugar, sweetness. So we, lo we look for that. And I noticed that in the Philippines, there's a lot of love for sweeter whiskeys as well as Asia. As years go by, I guess we'll learn more and more about what the Philippines kind of loves about, about their whiskeys. So you'd consider this, uh, no, you'd consider this a sweeter whiskey? Yes, I would. I would definitely consider it. I mean, the notes are very, very fruity. There's no, there's no smoke. There's no peat. It's it is definitely a sweeter whiskey, and that's why it's the brand is known to be the signature Speyside whiskey. You know, I mean, it, ah, it really focuses okay, okay. on the Speyside flavor profile, which is rich, sweet, and beautiful notes there. Nice. So nice. we're we're smelling this sherry cask. So are you ready to give it a taste? Let's go. Okay. So we can try that now. Hmm. Mm hmm. And then we swallow. Now that you've been drinking a bit, it's not as intense, right? Like you can yeah, actually kind true. of, you can, you can get the flavor profile. So the swallow is smooth. And now it's not as shocking when you first drink it, right? So what I love about the, the Sherry Cask Edition is it kind of like immediately imparts these beautiful textures of like, there's there's orange there, there's Demerara sugars there. And that's, that sweetness really pops at you. How do you like this whiskey for, compared to the first? I think I prefer this one. That's totally understandable, man. Like a I lot of people love the Sherry Cask Edition. It's really sweet. Yeah. 
Well, that's the Pinoy in me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, hey, man, just just the same as me. A lot of people think I'm not Pinoy, but I'm, I'm quite Pinoy, man. Like, I'm, I have some Pinoy in me. My grandfather was half Filipino. It's about as as much as it gets. But you know, I mean, I got some of that Pinoy love in there. Um. So Good, now man. I'm gonna kind of. I hope this blows your mind. Um. And we're gonna end this segment shortly. But this is my absolute favorite whiskey pairing. Um. I think this is the best way to drink your whiskey. The food pairing for whiskey. And we're gonna go with dark chocolate. So dark chocolate is absolutely my favorite way to drink whiskey. So if you're ready. We can take a bite of the dark chocolate and kind of let the acids of the chocolate just kind of line your mouth, your your palate, and your your. And when we try the whiskey, that will all kind of blend together, and it'll be this kind of flavor bomb. And I absolutely love it. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. I'll take a bite when you do. Wait, I'll take a sip first. <laughs> it's good, right? The cherry. Yeah, it's good. Okay, now that I know, so you're a sherry fan. I think that's where we're gonna start in terms of your you're kind of discovering what your palate is as a whiskey drinker. So yeah. Go, cheers. Oh my goodness. Right in the dark. Oh my goodness. Yeah. By the dark, and now once it's kind of there and in your mouth and ready, and you have that chocolate flavor there, then you are ready to take your your gargle of the sherry after that. Cheers. And then you swallow. And then that's like where it kind of becomes like this amazing flavor bomb mix, the balance of the parallel between the sweetness of the chocolate and that's slightly bitter but that brings out the sweetness of the whiskey That's even great, more. Man. That, that is mix great. of like kind of, you, you, you get what I mean by the acidity of the chocolate still there. And it yeah. kind of mixes in, makes it a little lighter on the palate as well. And then on the swallow, it's just like, it's it's great, man. It's my favorite way to drink whiskey, to be honest. Sarap dito. Shucks. <laughs> yes, sir. We learned a little bit about whiskey today and how to pair it, and that's that's part of my, that's part of why I love having my my friends as guests on the show because it it kind of helps me introduce them a little bit into the world that I've been in these past few years, like in the in the whiskey world, like going around and learning different things. When you say that there are all these flavors in the specific whiskey, how do they add that to the actual? product i mean like like well you know a majority of the flavor profile of the whiskey comes from the wood that it's aged in so a lot of these flavors are being imparted through the specific wood that they source out to create that so Ah. one of the reasons why it starts mostly in american oak is because that american ex bourbon oak so the alcohol that was in the ex bourbon oak the the bourbon that was there that that already coated the oak the oak it so it aged there now the bourbon's removed but the wood has absorbed the essence of that alcohol. That's where all the flavor profiles are coming from. Because wood has so much flavor that it inserts and it ages there. And that's where it kind of gets that. Nice, nice. So I think, I think if I remember correctly, around 80% of the flavor comes from the wood. So that's why the whiskey game, it's, it's beautiful, man. Because you can really, like, um, there's this one brand. It's called Jura. They have a whiskey called the Seven Wood, where it's aged in seven different woods. And six of the seven are French, are French oaks, different French oaks, and they each have their own unique flavor profile. So when you try it, it's like this whiskey that you've never tried before. And that's that's why there's so much that goes into that whiskey making process. But, you know, that's that's I think that's about it for our tasting. Now that we've tasted the whiskey and we've done the, the food pairing, feel free to be drinking through the rest of the night. Have, <laughs> have bites of the chocolate. Have the sherry with it. If you want to have popcorn Don't mind as well, if I do. It will work. <laughs> go for it, man. And now, now's where the fun begins because um, this is about whiskey and life. And this is actually where I get to catch up and get, get to know a little bit about what you've been up to. Choose the drink you want to continue sipping through the night and let's let's move on. So um, on that note, though, I just want to ask, um, yeah, what have you been up to in general lately? I, I know you, apart from one-man shoots in other people's houses... Um, how, what have you been up to and how has life been for you and the family during quarantine? Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs. Um, some of the, the ups definitely is the, the, the time, the extra time, a lot, a lot of, a lot of time that I have now with, with the girls. That's something that we never had before. You know, um, I noticed that, that Leia, my daughter and I got much, much closer. There were a lot of good things that happened 
during the pandemic. It's it's tough, man. I mean, like even though I could say that that we've sort of adapted to the new the new normal, uh, I think there's about 60 to 70 percent pa of the of the industry that hasn't figured it out, hasn't broken in to the online digital scene, no. So there's still a lot of people um, in the theater industry, the showbiz industry. Um, I don't know about I don't know about TV so much, no. But in live and theater, my point is, it's it's really like a lot of people have adapted, but it's it's not easy, man. I mean, like like. I, I I wanted to make this quento kanina, but it, it slipped my mind. But I was telling my team at one point because we were having you know we're having a lot of projects coming in. But again, the projects are the budgets are one third, one fourth the price because now the yeah. the clients have to they don't have ways of you know recouping their expenses. They, they, there's no sales, the bad. take there are no tickets. There's no uh, people coming into the venues. It's really expensive. Like the the safety protocols are really really expensive, man. And and it's a lot of time and effort, especially on the part of the the producers. Uh, so we've adapted, I think. But it's I told my team I I don't think I've ever. Uh, disappointed this many clients in my life <laughs> because it's all <laughs> everything is so mediocre now. I mean, like not everything, but kame uh, the projects that we've been doing. Parang I feel na if we were a number three, if we were a number three back in the day, now we're down to about number 18 because some directors who have been doing videos, who have been doing a lot of these um, online shows even before the the lockdown. Man, they've been able to, you know, this is nothing to them. They were able to adapt easily. So if you were to personally, I mean, talk about that and say, what what do you think the biggest struggle that that created that rift for you was? What would you say it is? Um, you mentioned that that it's the budget from the producer as well as just like the protocols that have happened. But what do you think the biggest struggle is? If you talk to any person, anyone in the In, from the industry, they'll give you different kinds of ex, um, not excuses, different kinds of um, reasons why they're struggling. You know, for me, naman, it's more on um, when I used to do the live activations, uh, product launch, and all that. It was so easy for me, even the place, even like for example, Joseph the Dreamer. Uh, yeah. It was so easy for me to understand. Or to not, I, I wouldn't say manipulate, but it was so easy for me to sort of like orchestrate um, moments within a live event, a live setting, because I understand what the audience was seeing outside the venue, what the process was of them getting into that venue, having control over the lighting that surrounds them, having control over the audio that that they're listening to. So it kind of, it's so easy for me in that setting to be able to orchestrate these these moments these these like magical moments right but when it comes to online you have no idea what device they're using to watch your content you have no yeah. idea if they're if they've got good speakers or if they're using headphones that's you actually no very idea, true you have no idea if they're watching it if if they're if they're having a good day a bad day if they're in the banyo if they're If they're watching it on their TV or whatever, I you love know. the banyo comment because that's probably where a lot of it happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest, that's, that's where a lot of the listening happens. Yeah, so that I don't understand how to approach that kind of an audience only hmm. only because for x amount of years I've always spent so much time watching live audiences. Uh, watching an audience, watching what you know, I, I I go to a lot of these foreign concerts, and I spend more time watching the audience more than watching the actual performance, because I look at all these builds, these little um, gimmicks or videos that they have, and I look at how the audience responds to it. You know, creatives, we we copy each other from time to time, but yeah. I, I look at I look at these these um. Concepts, and I observe the crowd, and I kind of understand what made the concept work. What is it? The visuals? Is it the lighting? It's all that. Anyway, long story short, I feel like I feel blind, man. I feel blind in this new, this whole 
new landscape of the industry. It's, it, it's so hard for me to understand the online audience. And then now, pa, ba? Online market will come in when they want. They'll watch their artists, the artists that they want, and it's you're not sure if they're gonna stay throughout that entire stream. Like that, you, that's why you'll see, the ba? You're watching. Aside from internet problems, which I don't want to get into because everyone knows that that's yeah, like, of course, <laughs> especially here. Yeah, but people coming in and out of a stream, people coming in, um, watching the first, watching the opening and then leaving, watching their artist and then leaving. Dude, I hate that so much, man. Because yeah. I was all about context. I was all about yung tahit ng show, uh, the threading, like the opening. And it was something that I was so proud of before where I would always tell my clients that you can't, if, you, if I'm going to do your show, you can't watch the you can't watch the finale without watching the opening because the finale won't make sense. Yeah, it's informed by the opening, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So because of that mindset that I had when creating my, my shows, dude, this 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 new this online thing, man, is such a headache because it's like I had to I had to sort of like not un, not the man unlearn it, but there were times where I just had to let it go and sort of like under like like just accept that. You know, we need to be able to create these standalone numbers that are nice on its own. Ah, bro, I hate that. <laughs> uh, but you know what, dude? For whatever it's worth to say, what you have released, these little the little clips that I see and and the videos that you make, I find them so hilarious and they're so you. And like, I think oh, I think you, it, thank you. I think you're actually doing way better than you you may think you are. But who of us don't have a little bit of self doubt sometimes? But I think you're doing great, man. Like, I thank think I, I always love your content. Thank you. Well, you know, that's that's therapeutic for me, huh? A lot of my friends in the industry, let's say I get them for projects and all that. You know, they'll they'll come up to me they during the uh like siguro this was mga August, September. Medyo may lockdown pa rin. And they'd be like, "Wow, you know, you're we're so happy for you, you and your daughter. You're 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 getting through this like like very well." I'm like, "No, you don't understand." No, you I'm think so, you know. I'm so depressed. <laughs> and I post these things because it makes me it makes me feel better. Like, dude, a lot of the issues that I post online, could I, I could I, I joke about it? Dude, those are real issues, man. I mean, uh, dude, you know what? Like, I I know that. And for whatever <laughs> it's worth to know, you inspired me to fix my air conditioner. <laughs> you really did. Like, I went and did it after I watched you. I was like, you know what? I've been putting it off. Pau did it. I can do it also. And I took it apart. And yeah. <laughs> You know? <laughs> so there was so like don't even think you know you touch more people than you know. Dude, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, no, the, did you see the one of Leia and the diapers? Of course. Dude. She's so cute, man. But but can you imagine that we had that you know, okay, so we had the entire year wiped out, all our projects wiped out, and then there's this diaper company that's talking to us and they're like, Hey, we wanna get Leia, you know, we want uh this to be a one year contract, lockout. So then you're talking about, you know, I was like, wow, Lord, God, thank you. Thank you. I mean, like, this is something that I needed to, to get to, you know, to help, help us get through this time. And then all of a sudden, Leia is like, I don't want to wear diapers anymore. Oh, man. I'm like, I'm like, Leia, you really sure? But Are you sure? <laughs> But, but just to stress, Pao, I mean, I think you're doing great work. I think, I mean, people are people are saying it because it does look like that, but I know everybody is going through a struggle time. So I am going to end this segment by just asking, okay, pandemic's over. What's the first thing that you do, you and your family or you as you as a creative? What's the first thing you do when everything's back to normal? Okay, you know what? Surprisingly, I want to just watch a movie, man. I just uh, back in the cinema. I have in the theater, watch a movie. Yep. Watch a play, bro. I don't. I, I don't know if I want to work eh, first. If we get over this whole thing, obviously it's gonna take time before they put together a, a nice, a nice uh, theater production. But if they can open the cinemas, bro, <laughs> I want to watch a movie. Dude, hopefully we get to work together someday, man. Oh na, oh na. I'd love to. The thing is, pa yung sa Joseph the Dreamer, de ba? It was my first play, my first play that I've ever I've ever worked on as a as a director. And I was like, wow, this might be the start of something new. And then and then we were the lockdown happened. That was March seven. You didn't even have a chance to have to have traction. <laughs> that, was, that was March seven. We locked down a week later, man. I remember that. 
one week after we close. There was no like year of pow. <laughs> there, no, there was no year of pow. <laughs> just you 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 started off on such a great note, and it's yeah. like all right. No, and then, and then boom. And then gawad, the the gawad award. Hey man, congrats gawad. for that. I've been trying to win one my whole life, and I've never. <laughs> the stars no, have never aligned for me. No, with the gaw, bro, the gawad. They were like, oh, um, Joseph the Dreamer, one of the productions that that's leading the citations or something. And I was, Shepherd, I asked the team. Is that because we're like one of three? <laughs> one of three that, I that mean, ran this year. A gawad's a gawad, dude. You, yeah. you got it. You won it. That's that's yours. I think for whatever it's worth to know, whether or not it was three or more productions, Joseph the Dreamer was a great show. And I think you would have had a very strong shot no matter what. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers to that, man. Do drink okay, because we're about to move on to my favorite segment of this podcast, which yeah. I'm really hoping to get you drunk. Um, by the way, um, of course, my love to Sam and Leah. They're, you know, I mean, like for those of you, of of course, those of you who don't know, um, Sam is basically my older sister. I grew up, I I grew up and as like living alongside her in her household as a constant guest to her and her sister Alex, and through them I I met and got close to Pow when we were younger. So it's it's so great to be able to just sit down and catch up now. But more importantly, it's great to be able to embarrass him or at least attempt to. <laughs> Because he didn't have a year of pow, but he will have a few shots tonight. And that's going to be fun. Dave. So we're nearing the end of the show. It's the part where we play truth or drink. The mechanics are simple. I ask you a question no one else was ever drunk enough to ask. And right now, I hope you are drunk enough to answer. If you don't want to okay. answer the question, you have to drink. If you answer the question, I will have to drink. Okay, so it's okay, a your opportunity okay. to, get me, to get me smashed as well. <laughs> okay, Gabe. Okay, so... For our first question of the night, go to your Instagram profile, click on the three dashes on the upper right corner, click on settings. You'll find this at the bottom. Click on account. Go to the posts you've liked and show oh us the last photo God. or video that pops up. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sam, I hope you're watching. Huh? Can you say that again? So okay. I go to. Click on your Instagram profile. Click on okay. the three dashes in the upper right corner. Click okay. on settings. You'll find this at the bottom. Okay. So Click okay. on account and go to posts that you've liked. Show us the last photo or video that pops up. One word. Sana wholesome. I'll take that <laughs> shot if it's wholesome. Dude. You deserve that. Okay, hold on. Where is it? Okay. Oh, they're not so bad. Not so bad. Okay, show it on the screen. Okay, not so bad. Not so bad. Very, very <laughs> good. Well, you showed us so much more than the last one you liked. You showed us your whole gallery, so we can screenshot that and really use that. Okay, okay. well, that, I got to take that shot, man. Go, so go, go. I got to take that shot. And it's not even like a shot to taste. It's like a proper shot. I did not know okay. that you could look at That's one shot for George. <laughs> you ready for question two? Go, go. Read to us the last text sent to you by dear Tita Gina, your mom. Oh my God. Show it to the screen so that we have proof that it really is the last text. We will blur out anything you want blurred. <laughs> What's the last thing she said? Hopefully it's something like, I love you, Pao, or <laughs> something like that. Dude. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what did she text you, man? Tita Gina's an angel. I don't even I thought that was a free uh, that was a shot for me for sure. Oh my god. Talking about someone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, team. That was a great that was a great question. Okay. Ito. What is the worst song your dad has ever released? Oh my gosh. Worst song, uh, original or cover? Um, let's. I mean, let's go original because you know, I mean, his 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 voice is so beautiful that you know, I mean, his covers are always good. The worst song. The worst uh, song your dad has ever released. Wait, tanga. The worst song. Oh my God. I love how I can tell you don't want to take the shot, so you're really trying to think. Um. Okay. It's good okay. risky. <laughs> I'm not gonna... I know. Right. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm gonna apologize to Sam later for you're gonna come out of this being like, well, <laughs> I hung out with George and <laughs> now I'm drunk. Okay, good shot. Okay, this is easier and you're a little drunk, so it might be easier for you to do this. Sing a K-pop song and dedicate it to your wife. Even like one chorus or verse. A K-pop song. A K-pop song. Is, an, is Sam into K-pop right now? Wait, lang, sige. I'll pull up some lyrics. <laughs> what are we going with? BTS? Or are we going with Twice? With <laughs> Itzy? What are we going with? Okay. I, my girlfriend is so into K-pop now, so I, I'm on this boat with you, brother. K-pop song, wait. <laughs> Never mind. If you don't want to, just take the shot, dude. God dang. Wow, you know, dude, wow, I've been on the show with quite a few guests, and they all managed to find a way. Oh, to gosh. Die, dude. You're, you are getting hit by all of my questions. <laughs> I really thought I'd be drinking at least half of them. Jesus. Okay, fine. Forget it. Okay. Uh, Even if it's a smaller shot. You know what? I'll take the shot with you. Cheers. Cheers, brother. I was gonna Some sing chocolate? a. I was, I was gonna sing a, BT, a BTS song. Mm. Then I realized that the army might crucify me if I. <laughs> the army won't crucify you. The army's so supportive. If I sing lyrics wrong. And then I was gonna th- sing something by 21, and then crush Kosi Sandara, eh, so my wife might get mad. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Oh my god, oh, there we go. I just said it's crush. I don't even have to ask that. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, this last question, unfortunately, Pao, for you, I really saved it to be the question that makes you take the shot. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> I didn't realize you'd be taking all of these shots beforehand, but I'm 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 sort of proud. The last question is simple. Which celebrity has given you the worst experience working with them? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. I, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I oh I really god. wanted you to take at least one shot. That <laughs> 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 uh, was my game plan. Just one shot. <laughs> wow, bro. <laughs> you took four. <laughs> oh my god. Holy crap. That's cancellation right there, bro. <laughs> this, is, this is my this is my um, sure shot. I'll just drink this with you, dude. Come on, let's together. Uh, uh, like this, Alang, like this. I'll give I'll I'll take the shot with you. But all I can say is you're my friend. Not talking to you, Georgie. Yes, sir. Here you are. You're my friend. <laughs> I would even say if it's a he or a she or a... But a safe. But, but he's yeah. your friend. Or he, he or she is your friend. He or she is my friend, but never again. Cheers. Never again. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Cheers to that. Dude, that's an intense question. But I know. I It was my money shot. I thought Tita you Gina was the safety, dude. Yeah. I thought Tita Gina was the question that would be like, Love you, Pao, or, you know, I mean, oh, Alex, Alex is almost due, or, you know, I mean. For those, who, for those of you who don't know, Tita Gina is my mother-in-law. Just to let the listeners know that I am not hiding that message to protect myself. I love my mother-in-law so much, so I've decided to protect her and take the shot. So that was that was all to protect Tita Gina, bro. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know what, dude? Like, I, you have two mothers. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know which mom you used. I just assumed Tita Gina because that, that, that was our connection. No, but honestly, we still call each other Tito Tita, even here, because we grew up together. Uh, my yeah. wife... Uh, oh, okay, so my wife and I grew up together. Um, our parents were business partners since the beginning. So when I would call my father-in-law dad the first time, you know, we all parang cringed and we were like, oh my God, this is so weird. <laughs> so every time I call them mom and dad, they're like, what do you need? I'm like, ah, well, I, I, uh, can, can, that's can, great. I, can I borrow a car? <laughs> much love, much love to them and <laughs> can I borrow a car? <laughs> 
Okay. All, all right. Well, you know what? That's our time limit, man. Like, you know, these fly by. I wish we could we could hang out more because I honestly really wanted to pick your brain about just Mando and what it's been. Like that that was that was something I hope we had time for. But it's all good. We've we've learned about whiskey. We've you've gotten to appreciate whiskey and I think hopefully a new way that you've never been able to before. And maybe after tonight, like whiskey will be a drink that you look for and and kind of be like, hey, I know how to, to taste that and I can learn a bit. I'm gonna actually. So, I was gonna make Sam do the entire thing that we did a while ago with the tasting and the the chocolate and all that. So. Hey man, anytime you want, we can just we can just do a call and I can I can do that anytime. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, that's yeah. all the time we have. I think my my managers are already gonna be like, Georgie, wrap it up. But <laughs> okay. you know, I mean, I love you guys. Um, thank you for joining me today, Pao. Um, this is kind of to quote Sean Evans. This is this is where you tell the audience what to look out for. Um, your social media accounts, like, tell everybody what you're up to and anything that they need to know about you right now yeah that's it there's nothing to know about it. i'm just kidding no. <laughs> uh no just just uh on social i'm i'm just uh i'm very active on uh on instagram don't tweet me don't add me on facebook i barely am on those platforms but on instagram i'm, I'm very active so you can follow me at paolo valenciano and if you're into live uh if you're into concerts brand activations and all that i also have a a page where i put all of that stuff in it's called paulo valencia at paulo valenciano live so yeah that's it all right thank you again paulo this has been boozy sessions again my name is george schultz wishing you all good health and power we're gonna cheers the way they do it in scotland and we're gonna say slangeva slangeva cheers brother last la, not necessarily a shot but last drink of the night Take care, everyone. Stay safe.